CTW here, and today I wanted to do a video to share some information, maybe some insight that could uh, help you as you work with dampers. Um, on an almost daily basis, we'll get an email from a customer and they have questions about their graph. You know, what what am I looking at is, is the typical question. What, uh, what does this mean? What does this graph mean? What is, what is my damper doing? So we'll try to answer these as best we can, give some insight, uh, get them moving forward, get them thinking about what's going on in the damper and how it interacts with the, the car or bike or motorcycle vehicle in any way. So just wanted to share one of these with you that came in recently. Maybe it, uh, maybe find somebody out there and helps them, and, and that's really all this is about here. So they send an email and they attach a data file, which is always great. Sometimes just a picture doesn't do much, but if we have a data file, we can open it and look at it. So they sent this in, and I opened the file, and I can see that uh, they ran uh, different adjustments on the stamper, and their question was, is this event, what's going on here, this spread, uh, is it good or bad? Is it cavitation? What is going on and what can they do to work with it to understand it better? And that's all I know. I don't know who the damper is, what, what car it comes from, what series. I don't know who built it. I don't know anything about it, but I can see the information. So I'm just going to talk about that uh, in, in very simple terms so that maybe we can all just apply it to whatever it is we are doing. So the first thing, obviously, we look at uh, the various graphs to see if anything stands out. They all show, um, nothing shows something out of line. We have uh, this side is compression, this side is extension or rebound. Um, this bottom line here is compression opening, and the top is compression closing. So the shock is accelerating out of peak velocity and slowing down while still compressing. And then we go into extension out to peak velocity and then back for a full cycle. So obviously there's some adjustments uh, that got made here. I've hidden the name so nobody can see anything that, so just ignore all that. But one of the things we notice is obviously there's a very large spread here. Is it the onset of cavitation or is it cavitation in, in without pressure taps? We we'll actually can never quite know uh, with 100% certainty if it is cavitation. But we can do things to see if uh, we can affect it. And, and that's the real idea, right? Uh, what, what is it? Can we affect it? Or do we have to look internally in the damper? to find it. So um, we do notice real quick that we get out to peak velocity and yet the force continues to build. So peak force does not happen at peak velocity, which is um, can be concerning. In a bicycle shock, that's very normal because they have a lot of other internal devices that add force and the further you compress it, but it doesn't really look like that's what's going on here. Uh, there is uh, something that's causing a large spread here and going that fast uh, has caused some problems. So my first response to the customer would be, what happens if you add pressure? So I don't even know what pressure this shock is at when they filled it. Um, but my question would be, add 25% more pressure. So if you add 25% more pressure, does this change? Does this get closer. And if this gets closer, then we can really think at that point that this is probably the onset or the occurrence, the event of cavitation that is happening. We added pressure and it went away. So, so this is, you know, more characteristic of fluid rather than some internal device. And by adding pressure or even dropping pressure, right? If we drop pressure and it, it gets worse, we, it's the same effect. It's still showing you that pressure is affecting the force curve, and the, that is typically cavitation of some sort. So, so these are things you can do almost immediately 
to to point you in the right direction or point you in a direction of what's going on. Now, again, I cannot speak to whether this is good or bad. You know, my the, the, the obviously question would be, did you run well? Did you finish first? Maybe this is something that you need to explore. Um, if you finished last or the car didn't feel good or if it, it just completely went away after five laps, well, then this might not be helping. So you can you can look at it that way. Uh, obviously, the stopwatch is always the the best indicator of whether something is good or bad um, in, in go from there. But uh, by adding pressure, you start to isolate what's actually maybe causing this event. And I, and I always call these events because uh, it's hard to say really what it is, but there's something going on. So adding pressure or decreasing pressure is certainly something to, to look at real quick. Um, the other idea, and we, we run into this a lot, is you know, you're, you're warming your shock up to 90 degrees, 100 degrees, and you run your test. What does your damper get on the, uh, on the racetrack, on the vehicle uh, during the event? You know, does it start at 100? Does it get to 150? Does it get to 175 degrees? Um, and you should, you should always know that. Every corner, you should be aware of the operating temperature during your, your race or your sprint or, or you know, your downhill, whatever it is you're doing. You should be aware so that you can best understand what your damper's doing at that temperature. So uh, maybe this was uh, at 100 degrees, this, this uh, test was run at 100 degrees, maybe the damper on the car after 10 laps, 20 laps, sees 150. Something to do again would be to run the damper to 150 and see if this changes. Does this go away? If this goes away, gets closer, has less of this spread, um, that's also likely telling you that uh, the temperature increases the internal gas pressure and that uh, reduces the, the onset of cavitation. So those are things you can look at, things you can you know, try quickly to see and isolate what's going on. Um, again, if you have graphs or you have questions, uh, that is why uh, one of the things we do a lot of, uh, just trying to point things out, but but maybe this one, everybody can think about this and use this to their advantage. And uh, otherwise, uh, you guys have a great day.